So in this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the PDF of the t-distribution from the definition of the t-distribution. So I've got some formulae that I've copied from Wikipedia here. So this is the definition of the t-distribution in terms of a standard normal divided by the square root of a chi-squared distribution of new degrees of freedom divided by that new, and that gives you or that is the definition of a t-distribution with new degrees of freedom. We are going to go from that definition to this formula, which is the formula for the PDF of the t-distribution, and this is valid from negative infinity to infinity. That's the aim for this video. What I am not going to do is explain to you why you should care about the t-distribution in this video. So I'm not going to go over the applications, the importance of this, why are we so interested in this. Hopefully most of the people coming to this video will already have some sort of idea about why this distribution matters. Often people are taught how to do t-tests long before they ever learn why they actually work. Because actually understanding completely why t-tests work is complicated. But we're not going to go into that in this video, that's not the aim for this video. We're just going to understand how to go from this definition to an actual PDF, which is this. Now, some prerequisites that you'll need to know in order to understand what we're going to do here. You need to know double integration. In particular, you need to know how to double integrate over Cartesian coordinates and how to change that to polar coordinates and integrate over polar coordinates. In addition, I'm going to expect you to understand what the gamma function is, so you can see the gamma function appears here twice in this PDF of the t distribution. So you're going to need to know what the gamma distribution, well, the gamma function and what the gamma distribution is. But I'm about to come on to that. So you'll also need to be familiar with the chi squared distribution of new degrees of freedom. So you need to understand that it is defined as the sum of squared normals, of new squared normals, standard normals, um, and that I, I want you to also know that that comes out as being special cases of the gamma distribution. So if you know all of that, you should then be able to follow what we're going to do in this video. So let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just rearrange this slightly. So we've got at the moment z, the random variable z, which is standard normally distributed, over the square root of the random variable v, which is chi-squared distributed with new degrees of freedom, and then it's divided by this um, value, this number, new. So whichever new you've picked as the degree of freedom of this chi-squared distribution, which will then be the degree of freedom of your t-distribution, once you've selected that, that is then fixed with regards to this formula. So it is just a real number scalar constant. So all I've done then is bring this denominator in a denominator up to the top so this is the same thing as this. So the square root of this number new times the random variable z divided by the square root of the random variable v. And the reason I've done that is I'm actually going to forget this bit for now because this is just a constant. I'm going to focus on working this thing out. The random variable z divided by the square root of the random variable v. And then once we've got the PDF of that, then I'll just change the PDF at the end to take account of this constant that is out the front, which is quite a simple thing to do. You know, if you have the PDF of a random variable x and you take some number a and you consider the random variable ax, it's not difficult to convert the PDF of the random variable x to the random to the PDF of the random variable ax. So we'll do that right at the end. So we'll leave this bit for now. It'll just make things simple. I like to do it this way. So we'll take account of that bit right at the end. So we're going to focus on this firstly. So a reminder, z is a random variable that is distributed by the standard normal distribution, so normal naught 1. v, so that's a nice distribution, we hopefully are all very familiar with that. v has a more complicated distribution, it is chi-squared distributed with new degrees of freedom and this is equivalent to being gamma distributed with parameters alpha is equal to nu over 2, and then beta is equal to a half. So we're not going to prove that in that this video, that's 
kind of a more basic thing than what we're doing in this video, which is deriving the PDF of the T distribution. So I'm assuming that you are already familiar with the chi-square distribution and familiar with the fact that it is equivalent to these special cases of the gamma distribution. And importantly, we're assuming that this z random variable and this v random variable are independent. So, next move. So we're trying to work out this thing, z divided by the square root of v. I'm now just going to rename some of my random variables. So I'm actually going to rename z. z is often the name we use for a standard normal random variable. But I'm going to rename it x. Now you might wonder, well, what's the point of that? It's just because when we visualize this distribution, we're going to have to visualize a bivariate distribution for a while. And I'm going to put this distribution on the x-axis, or what we normally think of as the x-axis, and I'm going to put this thing, the square root of v, on the y-axis. So I'm just going to rename them just to make it easier for us. So I'm renaming the normal not one random variable as x, and I'm also going to rename this square root of v as y. So y is now going to be the random variable that is the square root of v. And the first thing we're going to explore is what is the PDF of this random variable y, which is the square root of a chi-square distribution with new degrees of freedom. So this is a reasonably simple transformation of random variables taking the square root. So to find the distribution of y, we need to firstly consider what the PDF of the random variable v is, but we know how it's distributed. So it's distributed gamma, nu over 2, a half, and hopefully you know what the PDF of a gamma distribution is, so I've written it out here. Now, I haven't denoted this f of little v, which would be more customary, uh, given that we've called the random variable big V. The reason I haven't done that is because the when I did do that, the v was going to end up getting confused with the new, so I've instead called this f of x. So little x is denoting the place that you are in the range space of this random variable v. So for a gamma distribution, the PDF is only non-zero on the positive real numbers. So on the negative real numbers, it's zero. So the range space is the positive real numbers for this random variable. And this is what the PDF is given by. So remember, this is our alpha parameter in the gamma distribution, and this is the beta parameter. So it's beta to the power of alpha. So we've got a half to the power of nu over 2 divided by gamma of alpha. So gamma of nu over 2. And oh, this is nice. We've already got this bit, actually, for the PDF of our t distribution showing up. And then we've got x to the power of nu over 2 minus 1, so x to the power of alpha minus 1, e to the negative beta x, so e to the negative a half x. So that's the PDF of the random variable v for the positive reals. In the negative reals, it's 0. So now all we need to do is consider how is this going to transform when we square root it. And to do that, we're not actually going to work with the PDF. We're going to think about working with the CDF. Working with the CDF is far easier when you're doing transformations of random variables. So if you think about this transformation, V, if we draw the range space of V, it's the positive real line here. And then we're square rooting everything, which for the positive real numbers is a nice bijective function. So everything is being mapped onto one thing over here. And again, the range space for this random variable y is going to end up as the entire entirety of the positive real numbers. Remember, the definition of the square root is the positive square root, not the negative square root. So don't let that confuse you. Uh, this means the positive square root. So zero, if we put in zero here, even though arguably zero might not be included in your range space. Some people differ on what they want to do. Some people include zero in the range space. Some people don't. It doesn't actually make any difference because, of course, the probability of being exactly any number is zero. So whether you include that one number doesn't really matter. But if we were including zero, zero would be mapped onto zero. One, of course, would be mapped onto one somewhere. And then the numbers bigger than one, they're going to be made smaller by this transformation. So four, for example, would be mapped onto two. And you can see that some number y squared is going to be mapped onto y 
over here. And then as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're going to be mapped onto bigger and bigger things here. So you're going to get the entirety of the positive real line back again. Now, when considering how to find the PDF of this random variable y, it's easier to work with the CDFs because if we consider the probability that this random variable big Y is less than or equal to some value little y, that's the probability that it's falling in this part of the range space here. Well, what we can do is we can say that's the probability that in the original random variables range space, you were between zero and y squared. So it is the probability that v is less than or equal to y squared, which is this probability here. And then what we can do is we know the PDF of this, so we can get from this what this value is, what the CDF of this is. And then we'll have the CDF for our new random variable. And then all we need to do to find its PDF is then differentiate that. So the probability that the random variable v is less than or equal to this value y squared is going to be the integral from 0 to y squared. We don't need to go from negative infinity because we know that from negative infinity to 0, the PDF is 0 for this. So that bit just comes out as 0. So we can just start the integration from 0 here. So the integral from 0 to y squared of our PDF. And I've copied this into here. So now, the probability that y is less than or equal to y, our new, uh, little y, our new random variable cdf, is equal to this thing. So to find its pdf, we just need to differentiate this now with respect to y. So we're going to differentiate this thing, but of course we can now apply the first fundamental theorem of calculus to this. Now, if we had just a y here, this would be incredibly simple to differentiate with respect to y. You just get this thing, the integrand, evaluated at y. However, we've got y squared there, so we now need to apply the chain rule and the first fundamental theorem of calculus to say that this is this integrand evaluated at y squared times the derivative of y squared with respect to y, which of course is going to be 2y. So we're going to end up with this thing evaluated at y squared, so you substitute in for x, y squared now, times 2y. So doing this now, we're going to get that the PDF for our new random variable y, which is the square root of our random variable v, is going to be equal to this thing. And this is, of course, only on the positive real line. On the negative reals, it remains 0. So we've got 2y, which is what we get from differentiating y squared, times this integrand evaluated at y squared. So you've still got the constant part, which is a half to the power of nu over 2 divided by gamma of nu over 2. So this looks very complicated, but remember this is just a constant because we're imagining that our nu is now set. Yes, what we're doing works for any nu that is a natural number, but for the purpose of the calculation, once you've selected that nu, it is now just a constant. It's the degree of freedom of that uh, chi-square distribution that you're using, and it will end up being the degree of freedom of the t distribution. But it is still just a constant. It's not um, a varying part of the PDF. And then we've got y squared here, so we've substituted in for x y squared to the power of nu over 2 minus 1 times e to the negative a half, and again we've substituted in y squared in place of x here, so um, we've got y squared there. So now we can just simplify this, we can simplify this bit and we can bring this bit in here as well. So doing those simplifications and this is what we end up with. So I've got the 2 still here, we've got the half to the power of nu over 2 from here, we've got the gamma nu over 2 here, but now what we've done is we've simplified this bit, so we've multiplied the 2 by this thing, so we've got 2 times nu over 2 just makes nu, then we would get minus 2, but we've got y to the power of 1 here, which cancels with one of those, so we just get nu minus 1. So we've got y to the power of nu minus 1, and then this bit hasn't changed, just e to the negative a half y squared. So this is now the PDF for our random variable y for on the positive real line. On the negative real line, it's much simpler, it's just 0. So we'll have a break here, and in the next video, we will then consider how this thing, x over y, is going to be distributed. Remember, this is independent from that. That's very, very important. Helps us a lot. Um, and we'll think about how this is distributed, and then try and work out how the t distribution is going to be distributed.